Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with another video by History Matters. Back to back, I guess pretty British centric uh, videos here. Yesterday we were watching the video on uh, the Seven Years War. The pretty British centric kind of war. And now we are ans asking the question of why did Britain hand over Hong Kong to China? A short animated documentary. Well, all I know is that they signed like a 100 year treaty or whatever uh and then by the time the 100 years were ending um colonialism was at an end and china was on the rise by 1999 i want to say obviously the 90s were still heavily do dominated by japan and early 2000s i remember things in the news about you know the japanese economy was still the the number one asian economy it really wouldn't be until the mid 2000s into the 2010s where we see china really actually start to truly take over but anyways right china china on the rise good political move probably or good diplomatic political move there um uh kind of sucks for the citizens of hong kong though um for reasons that i'm sure everyone watching is likely aware of <laughs> Um, but before we dive into this question and see how History Matters answers it, uh, please do go check out the, game, uh, the links in the description box below. Would love if you join the Discord, follow me over at Twitch, and please do go check out the two gaming channels here on YouTube. One is for stream VODs and one is for edited content. With that said, let's get this question answered. The handover of Hong Kong from British control to the People's Republic of China in 1997 is considered by many to mark the formal end of the British Empire. Oh, it was 97. I don't know why I was thinking 99. Empire. As many of you will know, Britain had acquired the island and the lands around it during the Opium Wars against China. In 1842, Britain gained Hong Kong. In 1860, added Kowloon and Stonecutters Island to its possessions. And in 1898, Britain took out a 99-year lease on these lands too. Unlike the leased territories... Ah, that's where I was getting 99 from. It was the 99-year lease. And it ended in... That. Hong Kong and Kowloon were done so in perpetuity and there was no legal requirement for Britain to return these lands to China. Which raises the question, why did Britain also hand over Hong Kong in 1997? First, a bit of context. Yay. Japan had briefly occupied Hong Kong during the Second World War and whilst Britain had gotten it back from them in 1945, there was no guarantee that they'd keep it. After the Chinese Civil War ended in 1949 with a communist victory, there were concerns that it would invade, yet this never happened. Britain had hoped that the communist regime would eventually collapse and that the Republic of China, now solely in control of Taiwan, would end up running the country. As the Cold War progressed, the communist government's mm -hmm. position became much more secure, whereas Britain's international position declined as its empire disintegrated. As the end of the 99-year lease approached, Britain's Fuck. previous position of we don't deal with communists became much more untenable. When Margaret Thatcher became prime minister in 1979, she had very little choice except to engage with the Beijing government. The two positions both sides took were pretty clear. China wanted it all back in 1997 and that was final. Britain was content to hand back the new territories but wished to continue administering Hong Kong with Chinese permission. China said no. Mm -hmm. Negotiations between both sides were pretty Ooh, got him. heated at points with the Chinese Premier Deng Xiaoping telling Thatcher that he could simply invade and conquer the island anytime he wanted to and there would be nothing that she could do about it. One avenue of potential compromise was Portugal, or more specifically Portugal is also in this episode, okay. Specifically, the Portuguese colony of Macau, which Britain believed could act as an example. Macau was, during the Cold War, still administered by Portugal, but only with Chinese consent. At points, this idea was floated by and rejected by both sides because it did little more than kick the can down the road. To make matters slightly more complicated, there were many protests across the colony against continued British rule. Some of these mm. were pro-Beijing communist protests that one I don't think you ever really hear talked about much. Which were organised by trade unions with the ultimate goal of rejoining China. Some were simply protests which demanded greater autonomy as well as more democratic rights whilst also making it clear that they didn't think that Maoism sounded like fun. Furthermore, yeah. Britain and also China were faced by what's known as the Hong Kong Man. The Hong Kong Man was the manifestation of Hong Kong nationalism and the notion that the people there weren't British and they also weren't Chinese but instead were their own people with their own way of life. It was this movement which occurred in the wake of the Tiananmen Square crackdown which saw Britain introduce 
introduce wide-sweeping democratic reforms in the colony. In the end, though, the clock was ticking, China was patiently waiting, and Britain had to decide what was going to happen to Hong Kong proper and its people when the lease of the territories expired. Thus, Thatcher and the British government were left with only one option, retreat from China, since there was no hope of them retaining it under any circumstances. As such, Britain conceded to China's demands and pledged to return the island to China, but in doing so, they wanted certain guarantees. In the end, China agreed to maintain Hong Kong's capitalist economic system and its people's rights and privileges for at least 50 years. They kind of did that a bit sooner than uh, 50 years. Is. And for Britain, this was frankly as much as it was ever going to get. After the Second World War and the decline of British influence, the future of Hong Kong was decided in Beijing, not London. The Chinese government had to do nothing but wait for 1997 to come around, whilst making it clear that all of Britain's territories in the region would be returned. Britain could neither negotiate any continuation of sovereignty, nor could it defeat a power half a world away. And in the end, Britain handed over Hong Kong for one simple reason. It had no choice. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this episode and... Okay, and that was why Britain handed over Han Hong Kong, I was about to say Hang Kong, I don't know where the fuck my brain said that, Hong Kong to China, a short animated documentary. Uh, this was good, they they fit in a lot here in three and a half minutes. Um, yeah, they, they pretty much fucking covered it pretty fucking well, I'd say. I, I don't, I don't know what else to add here. Um, no further questions regarding uh, the situation at hand. Um, like, yeah, this was, this was well paced. Um, it wasn't information overload, um, but it also didn't feel like dragged out in any sense. Of course, I mean, it's hard to make a, you know, three and a half minute video kind of feel dragged out. So, um, but yeah, they, uh, yeah, this, this was good. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.